there are a number of things that I've learned about the Down syndrome community. First of all, people are very passionate about their family members with Down syndrome. There is a community waiting to support them. And this organization has amazing supporters that are ready to help. Yo, what's up? Hey, 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 Well, I guess I should introduce myself, bud. I'm Kyle. I'm on the board with the Edmonton Down Syndrome Society. He's, he's a friend of mine, Armand. He's cool. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we were coming to see you today to check out your new digs. What the? Yeah. We're going to your house where you know we're going to be talking to Karima and Yannick, your roommates. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, my name is Karima Hewig. I'm Yannick Hewig. <laughs> Uh, and we were at the Larch community in Toronto, and the Larch community was started by Jean Vanier, where he took in individuals with disabilities to live with him, and he created a family out of it. And uh, through it, it became an international movement, um, and it is in multiple countries around the world. We also found many agencies, um, they didn't treat people with disabilities like they were humans, and uh, they belittled them, and um, they they just didn't grasp the fact that, you know, people with disabilities could be friends with people without disabilities. And we we understood it because we lived it for so many years and we we loved it. We lived and we learned and to us everyone was the same, everyone was equal, and that's why we decided to become supportive roommates. We have two roommates that we support. One is named Eli and the other is Arman from the Down Syndrome Society. Yeah, so I met Armand through his through the Ismaili community uh, that we're both a part of, and we met at an event uh, that was hosted for persons with disabilities. And um, later, I was in connection with his mom, who needed a bit of extra support for him. And so, um, you know, me and my husband provided support uh, with helping Armand with his clothing choices in the morning, with some groceries, some meal preparing. Yes, uh, with cleaning cleaning the rooms. Um, and shortly after, uh, we had a conversation about different housing options that were available um, and different ways she could help provide support for Armand while his, when his brother moved to Toronto. And uh, we got to talking and uh, we pitched it to her that, you know, if she didn't find any anything suitable, we would be open to taking him in as a supportive roommate. Um, and she agreed. Like in the beginning, it was a little bit difficult for Armand. Like he had um, the first couple of days when we wanted uh, his mom was right now it was in the country, and like she had um, wanted to get him used to us and like living away from his brothers and stuff. But um, we tried it for a week, and like Armand cancelled on us like three times during the week that he didn't want to sleep over. And like Armand was very adamant that he wasn't moving in with us. Yes, but like when like when he finally moved, he didn't want to um, stay like the rest of the nights with his family while they were still in the country because he was like, okay, my new life, I live here now. <laughs> we're still learning how Edmonton Down Syndrome Society uh, can better support us. Uh, yeah. We learned about it through Armand and his programming, and so we're learning about the different supports they can provide and um, where we kind of fit into that role. I think where they support us right now is like um, giving Arman a chance to also learn um, about um, doing stuff alone in the kitchen and stuff like this, which gives him a little bit more independence. So like, I think that w that helps him right now with it. His mom always tells uh, me that his communication got a lot better because like he's forced to communicate with us on a daily basis and um, forced. <laughs> but Instead like, of, you know, watching TV and yes. eating your dinner, you're sitting and having a conversation. At a dinner table, how and like how your day was and like what what things you did and like... What's the plan for the evening and what do we want to do this weekend? Yeah, like or the rest of the week. Um, so we put a couple of structures in, for example... Um, we have quiet time after 11 p.m. and that was because we were being kept up until 2 a.m. <laughs> and both of us wanted to sleep so we tried to implement you know just quiet hours after a certain time so that we could be mindful of each other since we're all you know we're all just living together and we all have different styles and needs and wants and you know Armand has taught us that not everyone thinks the same and so sometimes when 
we understand one side of a situation, Armand understands a completely different side, and we're trying to kind of meet in between to show him that this is where we're coming from and to also understand where he's coming from. So Eli is our other supportive roommate. He has cerebral palsy and acquired brain injury. And Eli, Eli has learned a lot from living with Armand. Eli came from a group home where he lived there for 10 years and he really did not know what to think of the situation when we said that Armand was going to come live with us. Because he had Eli, not the best roommates. Yeah, he definitely didn't have the best roommates, um, ones that just weren't a good fit for him. And with Armand, um, we did a lot of relationship building before where we went to see movies, we went for ice cream, we went for dinners and we just we really chatted and explored interests. Um, their biggest being wrestling, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, just in living just in living here, um, I think for Eli, he's just learned that, you know, some roommates will work and some won't. And in this case, it worked really well. And you have to learn to focus on um, the positives and the different things that you guys do have in common. And, um, you know, really, really focus on what you guys can learn from each other because everyone has their strengths and weaknesses and what you might be good at, Armand might not be good at, and what Armand's good at, you might not be good at. And so to really kind of help each other out, um, to learn from each other, just like we're learning from them. If I were to give advice to someone who wanted to be a roommate, I would say do it. It is the best learning experience that you could you could do. It's something you're not gonna learn in any agency or group home. It is so much fun. It is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It keeps you busy. It keeps you active. It brings up whole new conversations that you would never have with, you know, other people that you might meet in life. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. If you have the opportunity, do it. Be a supportive roommate. Funding for roommates can vary, so uh, like we had mentioned before, you can go through an agency where PDD would give the funds directly to an agency to manage, um, to give to the supportive roommates. In our case, both of our roommates are through Family Managed Services, so the families have both applied for funding through PDD. They have done assessments based on the needs, and then the family is our, our, our employers, and they get to choose um, who their child lives with, and um, they're essentially our bosses. Uh, we report to them, we send them monthly updates, we um, we keep in contact with them on a, a frequent basis, we do ISPs with them, um, yeah. yeah. So like everything that you can imagine basically goes through them instead of like an agency. The thing you need to know about me is I like to be active. I'll play any sport, I golf, I do yoga, love boating, swimming, you name it. But the things that are most important to this organization is that I'm a passionate advocate and I will work very hard to make sure that it is stronger than when I have started out and leave it in a better place for the future.